To learn about the off-grid lifestyle and to be inspired to live your dreams, click subscribe so you don't miss anything. Hit the bell notification. So I'm back at the tiny house build again, or better known in the comments section as the piece of beep. <laughs> I can't tell you how many people really hate this thing. I mean, just despise it, but that's all right. I like it. Carolyn likes it. That's all that matters. Uh, and there's a lot of people that do like it, obviously, because people are watching the videos. I get, you know, 30 or 40 good comments about the place every day, but beyond that, not so much. So I thought I'd bring you back in, show you the uh, pallet wood wall that Carolyn's been working on. Very impressive, no matter what time of day, it just really shines and, and stands out. And Carolyn's still working on coloration. I think she's decided that she wants the natural color, so we're gonna get some sort of, she's thinking that we're gonna get some sort of flat, matte type of clear coat, and that way it doesn't shine it up. She thinks this shininess would be distracting. She's only got this section to do, and then she's gonna work on this wall. We're still deciding what we wanna do back here. Our gut tells us that we could use pallet wood back there. It just doesn't get that hot, hardly at all. And then we're gonna put a piece of metal over it, and so the metal's gonna reflect the heat back. We got enough pallet wood that we could easily finish that section behind the stove here, but on the other hand, then, is it safe? As I'm sure there's thousands of people out on YouTube land will say, no, that's not safe. So, you know, we're kind of just all over the place. We're not sure what we want to do yet. But we're definitely going to put a piece of metal there to wrap around, to keep everything cool. Many people have asked the question, why don't we just use the remaining pallet wood for the ceilings? Well, there's a couple of reasons to that, actually. Uh, even though it looks like there's a lot left, once she gets this wall done, there, there, there would be some left, but not enough to do the ceiling. So we'd have to go spend another $200 for 500 pieces, and then we'd have way too much left over. Secondly, Carolyn's getting up there in age, and uh, she just doesn't want to work over her head, which means I could do it. But I think if I said I want to do that, that would kind of make her disappointed. Sure is turning out nice. I say this in every video. It's just very beautiful to me. So my piece of beep. So today I'm going to continue putting on the metal roof. I'm almost finished. I just got two little pieces to go. I got to put the ridge cap on. Ridge cap is what goes on the very top of the building, right over the hump, you know, over the peak. Not a complicated process. And so this is the, the ridge cap. You can see the peak, I think. Not very complicated. I just got to cut the ends and, and fold it down. The biggest problem is, is being on the roof. Uh, I've really dreaded this aspect of it because there's just no way to safely navigate it. You can see I got my strap. That's going to help me get up there. I got to dry off the roof of the towel. Right now there's a layer of ice, you know, the frost. So I'm going to have to dry that up. I'm going to use my bath mats, which work pretty good when the roof is dry, but when it's wet, it's terrible. Then I have to lay the foamy strip down and then I put the ridge cap on, screw it down, and it's done. But like I said, I'm gonna have to use a strap. I gotta make sure that I don't cut the strap. The strap right now, I've got a piece of plastic. You might be able to see up there. The strap's laying on a piece of plastic so it doesn't cut from the metal roofing. That happened to me the other day. I had a towel up there and the towel just slipped off the side. Well, you know, I just gotta be careful. Uh, it was a bad experience last time I was up there. I'm gonna get started and cut that piece. So I've talked about how Menards or the manufacturer, I bought the, the roof from Menards. And so they got a supplier and you special order it online. And I've talked about how the shipping was just terrible. You pay $150 per crate. I bought three crates. They damaged one, you can't return it unless you repair it. And those two by sixes are like 30 bucks a piece. So I'm gonna lose 30 bucks if I repair it. They lost one. So there's 150 there that's just gone. And then this one, they didn't pack it so everything wouldn't slide around. They threw the eave trim on top of the ridge cap here, and you can see that it scratched it. Now, I'm sure some fresh are going to say, oh, what's the big deal? That's no big deal. It, well, it's a big deal to me because I spent $150 on shipping to protect it from damage, yet it's still damaged. So uh, I've, I've not been impressed with Menards. Of course, I'm going to have to buy it from Menards again when I build the porch so everything matches in color. But this time, at least I'll have an idea of what I'm doing 
and I won't have to rely solely on them expecting everything to be perfect. So now what I got to do is I got to cut this. So I'll cut this tab off is what I got to do right here on both sides. I cut an inch and a half down the center and then I got to fold this over so it will catch on the edge of the roof. And so I'm using a grinding wheel, not a cutting wheel. And I have previous videos on that and why I'm using a grinding wheel. Grinding wheel has worked fantastic for me so far and I'm going to continue using it. I want to apologize for the volume. I forgot my mic, it's down there, and I'm not gonna go back down to get it. <laughs> so I got up here, it wasn't so bad. What I did was I just put the bath mat down, the one I have up here, not that one. And I just took the, the strap here and I just pulled myself up. I just hand over hand pulled myself up. It was the safest thing to do. There's no reason to try to get on my feet. Now I'm on the peak. I can start putting down the foam cushioning. And then uh, I'll put the ridge cap on. I've already dropped my drill once, so I had Carolyn tie a bucket to the strap here and put the drill in it and haul it up. I've already dropped one of these, so I'm gonna have to call Carolyn again and she's gonna have to <laughs> tie that bucket back up and pull that back up. So, uh, challenging, but I'll try to keep you apprised. I mean, trying to do all this and maintain the camera has been quite the challenge. Okay, so I got the foam pad on here on both sides, went all the way down, had enough, had just enough. So my calculations were correct. So now I'm gonna put on the ridge cap and I think it should go pretty smooth now. Since I use one by fours, I'm gonna do something a little different and it shouldn't cause any problems. But my one by four ends right here. But the ridge cap is gonna end down here. Now the instructions in the video said that I was supposed to screw down here, but I have nothing to screw down into. There's nothing there. My one by four is right here. You can see where the screw is. That's, that's where the one by four is. So I gotta have to move the screws in a bit. It shouldn't cause a problem. We're not in a huge windy area. I mean, occasionally we might get a gust of wind every now and then, but we're, we're surrounded by trees. Okay, so I got one ridge cap on. I still gotta get one more. Turned out this wasn't near as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Well, it's bad, but I, I can sit on it. I was worried I wasn't gonna be able to sit on it, but when I worked that from that way to the edge, I could screw it down in front of me, and then I could scoot over, and it, it's really solid, so I didn't bend it. That's what I was worried is if I sit on it, would I bend it? So what I was telling you earlier was I had to offset the screw from here, that's where the instructions from the manufacturer said to put it, to here because the one by four ran out. It's not near as bad as what it looked like in the video. I thought it was gonna be, you know, like several inches. The video made it look really dr dramatic, but th there is hardly any play there. That's no more than what the edge of the roof is. And the edge of the roof, they allow you to do that. So I don't think this is gonna be a problem at all. So all that worrying all night about this, and it turned out fine. Okay, so I finished <laughs> the roof cap. Oh man, I'm telling you, this is just such amazing feeling. Finally got the roof on. Nothing matters anymore. The roof is on. The chimney is up. I don't have to worry about the rain, the snow. I can work inside. Carolyn can work inside with the chimney. With the chimney being up, we can have wood heat. We've already had it twice now. Oh, and it's very pretty. I'll take you down to the, to the road. Getting up and down, I've learned, is a lot easier with this strap. Okay, so there's the direction from the road to the tiny house. Probably the best view because you can really see on top of it. When I get down the hill, it's harder to see. 
And the chimney doesn't look so stupid over on this side. It looks so tall on the other side, but this side looks normal. <laughs> oh man, it's finished. It's over with. It's been a struggle doing this roof. It got to where it was pushing my limitations, physically, mentally, emotionally, all that stuff. But the pride that I feel to have actually accomplished something, working outside my comfort zone. I mean, I've tinkered around with carpentry, but nothing to this skill level and all the different aspects of it. I really feel like it's important that you push yourself to work outside your comfort level and to always learn new skills. Doing something new has really made me feel rejuvenated. I said in a video a while back, I hope it's okay that I feel pride about what I'm doing. So there it is. It's gonna be a great life. I hope I can inspire you to create something that you've never done before. Thanks for watching.